Hello and welcome to Gaming. I'm John Robertson and I'll be shortly joined by Stace Harmon. And in today's episode, we ask, when is death in a game about more than just dying? It's a pretty fitting topic right now, given that many of us are diving right back into Demon Souls thanks to its PS5 remake. But not only that, it's a subject that concerns the vast majority of games. Most games out there have some form of dying in some way, and so it's important to understand and consider that when it comes to both how games are designed and how players engage and respond to them. Before we start though, just a quick reminder, it'd be great if you could leave us a five-star review on iTunes or your preferred podcasting platform, and to follow us at Indie by Design, that's at Indie by Design on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of the social media platforms. Uh, do drop us a follow and get involved with us on there. And finally, do check out 20 Double Fine Years, which is our next book that's available to pre-order right now, which charts the entire history of Tim Schafer's Double Fine Productions, all the way from Psychonauts all the way up to Psychonauts 2, which is coming out next year, and obviously everything in between. Broken Age, Brutal Legend, Costume Quest stacking, literally, literally every single game that they've ever made. So you can find out more about that and secure your copy at doublefinebook.com. And you can check out IndieByDesign.net where you'll find copies of our already released books that you can grab right now. And so, on with the show and the question of death in video games. So you've been playing a lot of Demon's Souls this week, which is something of a turn up for the books because you weren't that interested in it initially, right? So what's your... One of the big things about Demon's Souls, of course, is dying a lot. Um... Which is handy, because that's what we're talking about on this week's podcast, the notion of, of death in video games. So what's your experience of dying of death in, in Demon Souls? How, has, how have you found that whole mechanic? Have you embraced it or has um, it put you off for life? Uh, no, it hasn't. It certainly hasn't put me off for life. Like So in general, like I love the game and I'm so happy that I did decide to, to buy it, to indulge it. Um, so I completed it already so uh so it took me five days to finish the whole thing not not like unlock everything do this do that but i am at a point now where i've got new game plus option available um and yeah so yeah dying is one of the most interesting things about the game like of course like that was known beforehand of course it's what everyone is one of the main things that people talk about when you know, mentioning what's what's good, what's well designed about Demon Souls and Dark Souls and whatever Bloodborne, um, but it is it is super interesting actually in Demon Souls, like really I think more interesting than it's almost given credit for, which sounds crazy because a lot of people mention it, but because, a lot of people because it's mention- not just dying, right? Because people often talk about it as dying. Oh, the game's hard; you die a lot, and yes, you have to get your souls yeah. back. But there's there's a lot more to it than that. Yeah, right? it's way more, way more to it than that. So yes, you die a lot. And yes, the core, there is that core mechanic of if you die, then you leave your souls in a little puddle close to where you died. And then you have to go back and retrieve them. If you don't retrieve them on that run, then you'll lose them forever. That's for the little breakdown for the one person that doesn't know how Demon Souls works at this point. Um so yeah, so that's a core element of the game and that does add a lot of tension and that does impact how you, uh, how sort of ballsy you are and how sort of gung-ho you want to be and how many risks you want to take and whatever before you kind of go back to the hub world, to the nexus and just trade in yourselves for levels or upgrade your weapon or whatever you want to spend them on. Um, but definitely, it's so, it's, there's so much more going on than than that. So you might choose to kill yourself on purpose, for example. So death becomes a voluntary mechanic that you engage in, which is very, very rare um, for a game to even think about, including something like that. Because if you're in soul form, so if you're in human form and you die, you go into soul form and you have to use an item to go back into human form and they're quite limited. Or or, or if you kill a boss, you'll go back into human form. Um, but if you're in human form, then you're at risk of being invaded by other players um, who are invariably much tougher than the vast majority of the enemies you're ever going to see in a game. Um um So if you don't want to risk that, then you might just decide, well, I'm just going to kill myself now. Um, so that does, so 
not only not only is dying like an ever present thing in the game that might happen to you, but you might even decide to say, "Oh, okay, actually, I'm not even going to avoid death at this point. I'm just going to kill myself on purpose." Um, that might you might might throw yourself off a bridge, or you might just stands there while an anim- while an enemy hacks away at you and kills you. Um, so I think that's a really interesting subversion of the idea that death is something always to be avoided. And even in a game like this, it typically is something that you should avoid because you don't want to risk losing your souls and, and whatever and making life hard for yourself. But, you know, they bring that all the way back full circle and it's like, yes, this is a game about not dying. This is a game about you died, taunts you whenever, you know, you die. But then they say, oh, well, actually maybe you do want to you do want to kill yourself i think that's a very interesting piece of design and it uses something like death in games is one of the most common elements that sort of connects all games together and it's normally connected by a desire to avoid it but here's a game that says actually no there's we're going to change the world in a way what can actually happen to you what you can see what you can do good and bad will change depending on if you've decided to to kill yourself yeah um, and that's it's making it a choice because even the, the even where you kill yourself if you die in a world then that changes the world tendency uh and if yeah. you do it in the nexus in, it's kind of the yeah. neutral ground where it doesn't but that then brings with it that you're only on like what 50 percent health or something while you're in you're on 50 percent health unless you've got a certain ring the cling ring which mm-hmm. pushes you up to 75 or 65 or something so it makes it it makes it a gameplay choice rather than just a a punishment or a just part of a natural part of the game. It actually makes it a thing to be considered, and it has implications both ways. If you if you die loads in a world, then it pushes it all the way to black tendency, and certain things happen. Certain uh, yeah, well, NPCs if you die, appear and stuff. Yeah, if you die a lot in human form, it pushes it towards mm, black mm-hmm. tendency. You can die as many times as you want in soul's form, I believe, and it doesn't. Um, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it changes the world. So yeah, you might want pure black tendency. Um, but to do that, you have to die a lot of times in human form. So you might just keep going back Even into human form. Yeah. 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 And, and then just allow someone to invade your game and just let them just keep killing you. Um, yeah. if you want, and that's great for that player that's invaded their game because they get a free, easy kill. Like, <laughs> um, that's fantastic. Um, but there's some other things as well. So the blood stains, um, in the game, so for people who don't know, you, you can one of the ways the online system works, you can touch a bloodstain, there are bloodstains that glow on the floor, and you can touch a bloodstain, it'll bring up a red kind of hologram of a, a real player in on your server who's died in, in that area, and it will show you how they died. Um, it'll just show you a hologram of them, it won't show you any enemies that have killed them or whatever, it'll just show you them. Um, so they and they act as like quite valuable hints sometimes so i remember once quite early on in the first stage of the whole game there's um a boulder that gets pushed down the stairs mm. by an enemy and touch you know you can touch a uh, there's a blood stain at the bottom of the stairs i touch the blood stain you see the guy his hologram run up the stairs and then just suddenly just fall to the floor and get flattened and die so you know that there's some danger there uh and you know that it's on the stairs and you know that it hit this guy suddenly because he didn't even react he didn't like, yeah. put his shield up yeah. he didn't do anything um so even in death you're you're offering clues to other people so your your death does have an impact in other people's games as well not just your not just your own game mm. um so yeah, I mean, in general, that's one of the most impressive things about Demon Souls. It's 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 about it's a game about dying a lot, but it's it's not you know it's more it's more like well it's it's about death a lot, but it's a but death in that game is more than just about dying. Yeah, like yeah, death always serves a purpose in multiple ways. In yeah, whether it's because of because you're getting hints from it, and I remember doing the same thing. I've not played the recent remake, but I remember playing Demon Souls originally and more of the other Souls games. And using those bloodstains as a, can I make this jump? Can I, if I roll off this cliff here down onto that platform, am I going to die? Is that too far? And using that as, it doesn't give you the answer because you don't know if somebody did die in that particular location. You don't know what their situation was. You don't get to see, you know, how much health they had when they died, yeah. when, before they rolled off a cliff or whatever. But yeah. it just gives you that little extra bit of information. And I think it's the, what I particularly like about it is that it, it, because everybody knows as well that Demon Souls, the Souls games, are about death to an extent. There's 
like an implicit contract formed with between you and the game or the game designers that you know that going into it and if you don't mm. then you quite quickly find out that that's that's how that's what it's about and so it i feel like it allows the designers to then do things that in other games would might be considered to be unfair or just not the way things are done because you can go into the first you can meet the first enemy of a, any given area and that enemy might kill you in demon souls because that's just the way the game works particularly early on perhaps not as you level yeah. up but particularly oh, yeah, early that's on happened plenty of times <laughs> and they and they've established that it's like well this is about dying and knowing that going into it there it doesn't need to be this here's this type of enemy, here's their attacks, this is how you kill them, now we're going to pit you against two of them. And it's just like, yeah, there's this new enemy, you find out about them by fighting them, they might kill you, you learn stuff, and that's how the game works. You you learn through playing, through dying, and we don't have yeah. to kind of hold your hand on that or be apologetic about it because we've made this kind of contract about it when you started the game yeah and the game's not wildly unfair either like a lot of people say it's got this brutal difficulty and it's really unfair and it just takes away stuff from you all the time i don't think it does actually when you die it's not too bad like it doesn't take away any of your well it it temporarily takes away your souls but it it doesn't take away any of your items or anything it doesn't take away any levels it doesn't take away a giant amount of progress because all the levels are, are quite short really well they're small anyway rather than like each between each arch stone which are kind of like checkpoints it's not that big of a distance um so getting and you know you die but you get a you get a chance to get back 100 percent of your souls and you actually a little bit you put yourself ahead of the game a little bit because by getting your souls you have to travel back to your soul so you're earning more souls on the way so you're not losing um <clears throat> even if you do lose all of your souls by by the time you got to you got there you've got some souls back and if you do manage to get your souls you've got a hundred and whatever percent of your original souls um <clears throat> maybe 200 percent if you've only just done if you died on that exact same run um so the game's not overly punished like it, it does give you a chance one chance to say learn from whatever mistake you just made and we'll give you the souls back um and it's actually a little bit more generous than that because if you die go going off the cliff i don't know what the exact system is but it seems to drop your souls a couple of in the location you were a couple of seconds before you died and i think that's because maybe if you died on like a dodgy piece of scenery that you can't get to again or something then that's unfair um so sometimes you'll but that does work to your advantage sometimes because if you die by being just like blindsided by an enemy when you go through a gate and then they just like side swipe you and you're dead your souls are like a little bit before that gate so it's not you don't have to go back to that blind spot again in order to get them back yeah. um and that's going to teach you and after that point you're never going to run through a gate again without either rolling through it quickly or putting your shield up or something you are you're learning every time you're dying even in those times where it seems like it's like is that fair that i you know it's like, well everything is is fair yeah it's, and, and in that in that specific instance i don't that, that's not that that's not that abnormal in games like if you play call of duty online or offline or whatever checking all of your corners is something you should do all the time mm. anyway like mm. so that the, the souls games are not demon souls it's not it's not especially unique in in that regard, you should be you should be being careful anyway. And and their skills that do translate from other games. The games aren't kind of like on an island of oh, it's, I just got blindsided by that guy. Well, yeah, but you know that happens yeah. in Call of Duty as well. Um, yeah. So Demon Souls is using death as as a choice, as a game mechanic, as certainly not not just as a punishment, possibly not as a punishment at all because if it was using it as a punishment then i guess it wouldn't you wouldn't even have that chance that crucial thing that crucial design choice where you get to go back to yeah. your bloodstain to pick up your souls they wouldn't even that wouldn't even exist if it were intended to be yeah punishment it's yeah well consequence yeah, I think, but not necessarily punishment yeah uh, yeah it can, yeah it's punishment if you're a player who just doesn't learn from their mistakes and just runs through and does the same thing again then yeah you're going to be punished for that but that but that's not the game punishing you through the game design that's, decisions that's again punishing yeah. your actions within yeah. the game yeah being impetuous um, you, you're going on that little mini death spiral of oh i'm so annoyed and i'm gonna act rashly and you just got killed when you were playing you know when you were in your neutral state if you like when you were like not raging and now you're raging yeah. and you're probably going to do something stupid and lo and behold you get killed on the way back yeah so yeah you if you know that, like that 
yeah, you should probably stop playing for a little while or go and do <laughs> something else. Go outside. Game. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you're allowed to. But yeah, I mean, the most interesting thing really just on a sort of top level is is that, you know, the vast majority of games just treat death in the same way, right? Like it's, okay, you die and now, well, it used to be that you lose a life. That's kind of less common now. But it's, you go back to your last checkpoint or you go back to your last save and that might be a checkpoint that was one second ago or that might be your last save which was two hours ago if it's mm. just manual save so mm. you know well that's that's on you um but really all the vast majority of other games do treat death in exactly the same way it's that okay now you're just going to lose time basically by going back but we're just going to give you that chance to do exactly that same thing again like exactly yeah. the same thing again um that you yeah. just see yeah it's like it never happened yeah it's yeah, exactly. Yeah, time just gets rewound. And sometimes, you know, you'll lose some money. I say in Borderlands, um, when you die, you get regenerated or, or like a new clone of your character is made. But that costs some money to mm-hmm. do that. So you lose money mm-hmm. each time. Um, so it can be a bit irritating. Um, but really, it's it's just the same. It's just the same thing. It's just like the equivalent of losing a life. But instead of losing a life, what would have been losing a life in Crash Bandicoot or Mario back in the day is now just losing some of your money. Yeah, um, and I, well, I think it seems it feels like often death is used in death is used for the same reason that audio logs or text logs are used in games because it's like at the time it's what is what is a better solution like we need to deliver a load of exposition we are trying to make this world seem richer so let's stick down an audio log or a text log because there's no NPCs around to talk to you. Death is, well, we need to, there needs to be some stakes. There needs to be some reason why you are playing yeah. a certain way or being careful or being punished or whatever it is. And how else do we do that other than death? And yeah, but I think there's some games, like you mentioned Mario, Crash Bandicoot. There's some games where I feel like that, you know, the, the kind of the originators of, of the traditional platform game, as we know, it's something like, the original Mario, it uses death, not I don't feel because it doesn't know what else to do. It doesn't know how how else to how else to deal with punishment or you learning yeah. the game. But that is also an implicit part of the game design. It's a you will learn this level through mm-hmm. repetition. You might get yeah. lucky and get through the level. You might react to a particular thing and have particularly good reflexes. But th- there is still that for me. There is still that implicit contract of this is how the game works. You understand that there's going to be certain instances where you are only going to learn what to do by failing at it because this platform falls away when you jump on it and there's no way you could know that perhaps or whatever it might be. And that also is, for me, that's okay. That's a different type of game. It's a different way of using death. And that's also, it's okay. It's when games fall into the middle ground that it's like we need something to, to... impede your progress we can't just have you stand there and be invincible so what are we going to do and that's when it's the weakest for me um and yeah so something like demon souls yeah. and mario both fold it into their design and of course roguelikes do as well but yeah other games struggle with it it's like do we just ignore it do we hand wave it do we say well i don't know like you died but yeah it's so okay. you need yeah you need some sort of death in most games because yeah you need that tension of having a fail state that um is if it isn't there then kind of what's the point in playing like Mm. you know like what what are you actually succeeding in here because if you can't fail then surely by definition you can't really truly succeed either um you can just kind of retain the status quo kind of um uh which to some people might be might be um might be success but in a, like a traditional game sense there kind of does have to be a win and a lose um yeah i mean some games do try to get away from death like that don't they like prince of persia does that thing where you die <laughs> and then it just pulls you back onto the other thing yeah. or, or back onto a platform that you died on it's just like okay go again yeah i think bioshock bioshock 3 bioshock infinite do the same thing when you die and she pulls you up she just comes over to you and says, like, oh you're okay actually here you go drink this or here's a healing whatever she does to heal i can't remember yeah. but she revives you um and she just pulls you back up and then death is kind of taken away um and then you just continue 
you continue going. So yeah, I mean, those games, I would argue that those games, well, they've built in narrative reasons for those things to happen. And the narrative reasons within the world does kind of make sense. Like, don't get me wrong, it does. Um, but mechanically, or they haven't really embraced the idea of death. They haven't kind of said, okay, death is the thing that happens. So now let's make something interesting f- around it. No. They've just kind of removed it instead. It's a hand wavy narrative reason for something happening that it's like the, here's here we're trying to find the best possible narrative reason why this thing has to happen why this game thing has to happen um when really the better solution would be to look for a an alternative that doesn't require that that doesn't require that th- thing to need an explanation in the first place and i think that's that's when i get frustrated that's when it's like well what's the point i don't really buy that narrative answer so it's like you know this has cost me nothing and it's it's not interesting yeah. enough it's using death in the traditional sense but trying to find a clever way to explain it and i don't think it yeah me, it's basically it's less, less satisfying it's just giving you infinite lives and explaining it away with a, a narrative a line that someone's written yeah you know yeah it's like one of those like deus ex machina moments like hand of yeah. god moments where it's oh here we go like we can't figure out what to do with this so here's this special thing that suddenly saves the day you yeah know, you see it's it in, basically like, bad yeah, films that, that and bad a, comic books all the time yeah that bit was all a dream that bit didn't happen and like you said yeah, exactly. prince Persia is literally that no that's not how it happened it's a cute idea like somebody's retelling a story some you die oh no that didn't happen like that but it's just not yeah it's, it's too not transparent it's, it's, yeah and it's not mechanically woven into the game like no. there's a dissonance between the narrative and the game mechanics at that point so it doesn't help death become more of a part of the game actually kind of maybe it actually increases the kind of the fakeness feeling around death as is in most games um i mean you can design it out you can you're you're, all not design it out but design it into such a point like demon souls does that it that it becomes a part of the game, like roguelikes, as you say, are built all around, a hundred percent around dying. Like you, you have to, you kind of have to die in order to, for a roguelike to even make any kind of sense whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or you go completely the other way and you just have permanent death or like semi-permanent death. You have permanent death in, uh, or like Daisy or something, mm-hmm. or you have semi-permanent death. Well, it's still permanent death, but it's like limited permanent death i guess i don't know what you call it in like XCOM, where individual characters will die off but your but you as a player your progress yeah, isn't reset. your game continues yeah 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 and that, uh-huh. so it won't it won't surprise you at all i don't think learn that with something like um the last of us the last of us part two there's a mm. that deals with death in that very binary you died restart kind of way um but there's a because of how invested I am in those stories, there's a little part of me that's each time Ellie dies or Joel dies outside of the, uh, well, during gameplay, let's say, um, Mm. there's a part of me that's like, there is a world in which this happened. There is a, there is a in-game world in which Ellie dies at this point. And that's the end of the story for her. The world goes on, but Ellie died in this really ignoble way trying to clear out this basement and a bunch of clickers jumped her and she's dead. And there's a part of my brain that, that considers that for a moment, very, very, very briefly. And then, you know, I hit reload and carry on, but that's where if you're invested in something, I I guess you, you make it make sense. And I imagine there'll be people that feel that way about Bioshock. Like it's a, it's a fantastic way of explaining it. And that makes sense for me. And I enjoy that part of the story. So it's not, that isn't, that isn't to say that you know there is a necessarily a right and a wrong way it's just your personal subjective opinion on on the way that things are explained narratively um i think the roguelike thing you know roguelike we talked about a few episodes ago hades um that almost i almost feel i'm still playing hades i'm some ridiculous number of hours into it now and there's up to a point there's almost a reward for dying or certainly a very big consolation prize that you you die and it's not you know there's that initial sting of dying and being like oh i failed against in in combat against this but now i get to go back to the house of hades and explore what new narrative um options and dialogue trees there are to explore and i can only do that by dying and dying is acknowledged it's you know zagreus talks about it each time he dies the characters around him talk about it, like Meg or, or Hypnos talk about it, the particular thing that killed you. If a boss kills you and you get back to that boss later on, they might acknowledge that 
we got you last time and you know so there's it's just folded yeah. in and, and well and it's also the, the only makes way it makes sense as well entirely yeah yeah and it's also in, in the games like that and in roguelikes in general usually it's the only way to level up as well you have to die mm-hmm. to go back to that place in order to access the systems and access the people in the menus that allow you to level up or you know pimp out the the house of hades and fancy stuff or whatever you want to whatever you whatever you want to do um but yeah roguelikes are an interesting one aren't they? because they yeah they are built around death like you've said in hades um and as you like when you go back in when you do the second run or the 50th run or whatever um that thing that killed you in that last run or the last 49 runs might not even be there in the next in the next thing um so it's got an interesting relationship in death in that whilst in it's different than demon souls because in demon souls you kind of know what killed you and you know what's going to be there next time and you hopefully have learned from your last death in order to defeat it this time in hades and roguelike you can't always do it to that same degree because you don't know if that thing that's going to be that killed you last time is going to be there so you do need more deaths in order just to get a wider understanding of the game mechanics in general to set you up for more situations that might be well, concerning compared to Demon Souls, are very unforeseen, comparatively much, much more random. And I think that that ties into something that we talked about during the Scary Games episode about like that exposure to it. Because if, yeah, absolutely, if you're playing Hades and you were in Elysium and there was a particular room where there was a bunch of pinwheels, which are the little kind of chariot things that come towards you mm. and explode, if you've got certain weapons, they're a lot easier to deal with. Ranged weapons, unsurprisingly, they're a lot easier to deal with than if you're using the fists. And so because you're not exposed to that same thing over and over and over again, it doesn't lose as much of its power because you might do several runs after dying to X thing, mm. not see them, go back in and be armed with a certain weapon and then see them again. And then it's like, oh, you get this feeling of like, oh, now I'm, I've got to deal with this thing that last time... I died or now I've got to deal with this thing and I'm not using a, an appropriate weapon or a weapon that's kind of weak against these things. And so that exposure thing that we talked about in the horror episode, where just through repetition, it blunts the effect of something Mm, mm, happens mm. much less in a roguelike because like you say, you're not, you're not, you're not always going to see the same thing, perhaps bosses notwithstanding. Um, You're learning systems rather than layouts. Yeah. Roguelikes. Yeah. And hoping the next time you come up against it, you can apply it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting what you're saying, just to go back to Lost of Us 2 thing, and the story continues um, on that death, because some there are some games, like the Telltale games do that, don't they? You kind of have favourite characters die, and the, and the game literally does continue, um, or Heavy Rain does that. Um, which, is, which is quite interesting, because, uh, yeah, like a death does directly impact, and I'm not like a giant fan of those games, I have to say. Um, I do, I do like them. I like the Telltale ones better than Heavy Rain, better than Until Dawn, um, <clears throat> better than more than Until Dawn, more than Heavy Rain. Um, but I'm not a giant fan of them for various reasons that are not really to do with death. So we don't have to get into those. But they do do, they do do interesting things around death. And yeah, dying doesn't mean the end of the game. Dying does mean, and now the story is different from before and i think that's that's that is a genuinely good way of having the narrative and the game mechanics kind of blends into or, or the game's sort of system and and pacing blend into one meaningful whole by the end of it like deaths do matter in, yeah. in those games they're not just there's not just written off as okay now we're just gonna redo that bit that it's interesting do you think or... I, I find the, the language around that those games interesting though because it was we as players will often still talk about getting the good ending or the bad ending because we're so conditioned yeah. to think about death in video games in, in a certain way yeah. that it will be oh i got the bad ending where everybody died i didn't i didn't just get an ending where like all these people were dead and I got to see this other thing that you didn't see. I got the bad ending. I got the good ending. And that's yeah. like, there's a, well, that's an interesting kind of. Yeah. Cause if you behavior. compare that to say, I don't know, like, uh, like until dawn's like supposed to be like a slasher movie kind of homage, isn't it? Like mm. if you compared that to, Oh, it's, it's the good ending or the bad ending. If you compared that to like scream or 
Don't Breathe or Texas Chainsaw Massacre or these slasher films. And, it's like, and then the only good ending in the film to the film is the one where no one dies. It's like, <laughs> what's, what, what's the point? That's a like, fail. Yeah. The, 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 slasher, the, the slasher character, the, the enemy, is so <laughs> pitiful that he couldn't kill these teenagers running around drunk, <laughs> falling all over themselves. Uh, he couldn't even kill one of them. Like, and that's and that's the good ending, is it? <laughs> um, I know that you know games are interactive, so therefore you should be trying to save them. Blah blah blah. Yeah, of course. But narratively, um, yeah, you're right. The terminology of good and bad is still dictated by our the interactive gamey elements of the game rather than the narrative ones even mm. though those games are so heavily narrative mm. focused that some people do say that they're not even games at all all you do is quick time events and move from a to b yeah. and a new cutscene yeah. uh, triggers um well that's where so yeah, the stuff like i think that's where things like xcom are interesting because you don't in in that same language i don't think you really talk about the good ending and the bad ending you just get to the end of the story you you the it's a very personal thing, I think, with something like XCOM. And I've also been playing Other Side recently, which is a kind of a roguelike XCOM style game. Um, but in both those instances, it's not really about how many... The number of people that died, or if your favourite soldier died, it's just more an, an accent on the story. It's not a... Or Darkest Dungeon is another example. It's not a, um, like, oh, and then I failed. It's a this person who had been the MVP for, you know, three, four, five, ten fights, then yeah. fell to X, Y, or Z in XCOM. And that doesn't, you carry on, you feel it more because you can carry on. You feel, you yeah. feel that death more because you, at that point, you might sit back in your chair and, you know, either rage or be silent or whatever and contemplate that. But ultimately you're probably going to carry on and you take that with you. And well, that's, yeah. that's a far more, to me, that's a far more interesting narrative thing where it, the narrative, the game narrative doesn't explicitly acknowledge that, but you as a person do, and that yeah. becomes your story. And that's, yeah. I, I, that I find really interesting. Well, yeah. And it's a loss because of the continuation, mm. isn't it? Like the world yeah. carries on. Yeah. Uh, if the world stopped or reset itself, then it's not and a loss And there's no loss, all. is there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, what, yeah. So... I don't like the, those sort of games as much as you do. Like I do, kind of like them. Um, they're fine. I do. I do quite like XCOM. Um, the thing that always gets me on those games, and I, I am one of those people who just like, nope, I'm not having that. I'm just going to reset <laughs> Hard nope. and go back. And the thing, but when I do that, I do that on things like so. If I've got this hero character who's been with me for like ten hours or twenty hours or whatever, and then they die. It's okay so long as they've died in like a really heroic, like meaningful <laughs> way. If they just get killed yeah. by like some grunts Random or whatever, hit, just, yeah. and it's just like no, yeah, I'm, I can't have that. Yeah, like, I can't, <laughs> I can't have it. I mean, I've just seen too many movies or whatever, or read too many comic books. Like no way. Yeah, like Captain America is not dying because like <laughs> you know, like he just fell over and hit his head. Like yeah. no. Right, yeah. no chance. <laughs> like it has to be like a legendary death, right? So just keep reloading it. Yeah. Well, I wonder. See, I wonder how you would get on with other side because that takes the notion of death and it uses it as a game mechanic, and it uses it in the sense that you have to embrace it because in order to heal, it's like XCOM. So it's like you've got this lineup of soldiers, although not as many in other side. And in order for for any of your characters to be healed, you have to sacrifice other characters. And yeah. and then there become again it uses death as a as a choice mechanic because you can take you can keep taking people into battle and maybe you'll get away with it maybe you know you've got a slither of XP left but maybe if you can take them into battle and shepherd them through and they can get a couple of good hits in they'll get through that and they'll level up and then you can sacrifice a different unit for them but but you have to make a choice at which point do you sacrifice them. Because if you keep using all of your people, they're all going to die. So there's no, yeah. like, you don't get a does, choice in that. Does that not, um, so there's this idea of the death spiral in games in which, you know, dying causes you a harm that becomes so harmful that you can't get out of the thing that killed you in the first place. So mm. the death makes you a little bit weaker and then you go back and do it and you fail against so you're a little bit weaker. So every attempt gets harder. Mm -hmm. In other side, does that not, does sacrificing someone to heal someone else does that not make you weaker but because you've got less so uh, less units it, to call not, upon it can do but not 
because you know that that's part of the game uh you're it's intended that you play in a way that you're always leveling a certain number of people because the other thing is you can only sacrifice somebody of the same level or higher to heal a particular unit so you can't sacrifice a level one unit to heal a level five unit you have to be bringing them all up which makes you more attached to all of them because now you've got two or three characters that are level five or six and the only way to heal one of them is to sacrifice one of the others so yeah but doesn't that make you weaker because you've got to get rid of a really good element you've got well, to get so rid it, of a high powered element but no because because there's only three classes so you you tend to kind of shepherd maybe two of each class knowing and you don't have to sacrifice the same class to, to heal the same class but you have have one on tap and a bit like darkest oh, right. dungeon does there are often easier levels for you to go into easier missions for you to go into that still progress the story but that you will then bump up some of your lower level characters so you're right. not having to just go along the critical path and lose high level characters and then have to retry that with low level characters you can always try and dip into easier missions and i think the most interesting interesting thing for me about it has been because it's also a roguelike that has an implicit notion of you're going to die you're meant to die and in a game like an XCOM style game it's like well those two things are at odds you're not meant to die versus a roguelike where you are meant to die or dying has some benefit um it yeah. makes it's made me make certain decisions in playing that mean that I've kind of sometimes thrown caution to the wind because I'm like, well, this, I guess this is where I die in order to start my new run. Mm. But sometimes that doesn't happen. And sometimes it's like, oh, I'm actually, I'm now 12 or 13 or 15 hours in and I still haven't died. And then the stakes get increased because now actually I'm thinking, well, maybe now I can just get to the end without dying at all. So there's mm. this whole, and whether that's good design or not, it, it what it does for me is it, it makes me think about it and it brings up questions and it, I'm actively thinking about stuff as I'm going along rather than just, oh, I'm going to die and, you know, I guess I'll yeah. just have to try again. And I think that's yeah. that's the most interesting thing. It's making me ask questions and make choices. Um, <laughs> that, yeah. yeah it, well, I think that's the most interesting thing that death can do, really. Is it? Well, it's not the most interesting thing, but it's something that I guess would be nice if more games did. I'm trying to come to some sort of conclusion here because mm -hmm. we're... Mm -hmm. running out of time but it'll be nice if more games treated death with some sort of mechanical game mechanical narrative interactive respect because it's something that is not going to go away from games is it like mm. it's going to be there it's one of the most obvious and easy and understandable and doesn't need any um context for explaining what a, what a death is um to your character or characters um yeah, it would just be nice if more games took it seriously rather than just treated it as a as an inconvenient truth, yeah. really, to to that they've got to just shoehorn in there somehow and how do we either avoid it or make it so meaningless that it might as well just not exist. Yeah. Just yeah, and just an acknowledgement of it. I think even just in XCOM, you lose your best soldier or one of your favourite soldiers and a message comes up and asks you, do you want to abandon the defence of Earth to restart and try again or do you want to soldier on? And it's like, yeah. you know, it's not sometimes it's, if it's if you're dying all the time, it's going to become cheap and you're just going to keep pressing yes. But it's like that thing of, of acknowledging something's happened, asking you a question, making you think about it, making you choose and making you implicit in it, making you part of the process rather than just this thing happened to you, do it again. And that's, yeah, because that's not fun. Okay, there you have it. Death in video games. Tell us what you thought on social media. We're at Indie by Design across all platforms. And if you follow us on Twitter, then you'll find links to our Discord server there where you can chat with us in a, in a different way, in a Discord-y way. Otherwise... Do take a minute to check out 20 Double Fine Years, our big book of all things Double Fine. You'll find that at doublefinebook.com where we're currently taking pre-orders and there are some nice pre-order incentives there for you to check out and get involved with. Other than that, stay safe, have a good week and we'll see you next time.